Welcome to Mindful Living. Today we're going to look at habits. So often we look at habits in either like a starting a new habit or perhaps it's kicking an old habit. And today we're not necessarily looking at either of those frameworks, but rather noticing what habits you have already in your life and reflecting on the facts if there are helpful habits or perhaps habits that lead to um, stress and challenges in your life. So we're being a little bit more reflective on habitual patterns. It's another word that we could use, um, pattern or habit that you already have in your life and how they're showing up, if they're helpful or if they are not. And then maybe we'll look at um, starting a new habit or maybe trying to sh change a habit that you already have that's not exactly helpful. So here's an overview of today's class. First, having a, a notebook will be helpful. You don't have to, but I think you'll find it helpful. And towards the end of the session, I'm going to offer um, some, some journal prompts as well to get you, you thinking. Um, first, say hey. Let me know that you're here. Comment here. Comment hey. Um, imagine that we are in a room together and you're going to come in and you're going to sign a clipboard to let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're here. Um, and then as I go through the class, let's interact just like we would if we were in a room together. Um, you can do the thumbs up reaction if you agree with something. You can drop a heart if something um, resonates with you. Um, please comment to share your thoughts, your insights, ask a question, anything at all. Even if you're catching this uh, a week or a year from now, um, comment. Um, the best way so that I, if you, if there's something that you specifically want me to see, just tag me at Casey Jean Miller. Otherwise I might not get a notification. I'll do my best to check. Um, but that's going to ensure it's especially helpful for questions. Overview of today's class. Um, I'm going to start with a reading, um, on, um, habits, take you through a short guided meditation, look a little bit more about habits as habitual patterns or behaviors, ways of being, and then a reflective exercise, and then what comes next. All right, so first I have a question for you. Let's see here. Here's my question. How would you define a habit? Take a second, think about it, and you can either write it in your own notebook or page or, or maybe it's an and or, you can put it here in the comment section. How would you define a habit? I'm going to put about 30 seconds on the clock. How would you define a habit? There's no right or wrong. You don't need to look up at the dictionary. It's how you would define a habit. All right. Again, no right, no wrong. It's just really considering how you you yourself define a habit. Okay, so I'm going to read now. Um, it's a poem by Portitia Nelson. I love this. It's titled in autobiography in five short chapters. So you sit back, relax, listen. Chapter one, I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter two. I walk down the same street. There's a hole in the sidewalk. I pretend that I don't see it. I fall in again. Can't believe I'm in the same place again. But it, it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter three. 
I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it's there. I still fall in. It's a habit. But my eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter 4. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter 5. I walk down another street. Hmm. Isn't that poignant? If you have any thoughts on that poem, um, autobiography in five short chapters, let me know. What, what did you gain from that? What did you take away from that? Have you heard it before? For me, it's one that I, I, I've, I've known for many years now and I come back to it. Um, I kind of equate it to like the metaphor of knowing that the stove is hot and yet still touching it, right? Sometimes we know there's a hole in the sidewalk and we keep falling in even though we know it's there. And so that's kind of how we're looking at habits today. Maybe it's not a hole, <laughs> um, but there might be something in your life that you're doing that maybe isn't helpful or maybe you are doing something and it's really helpful, but you haven't even really realized that that's a habit you have in your life. So meditation time. It's only going to be about five minutes. So um, sit back. You can sit on the floor if you're comfortable sitting on the floor. Um, you don't really need to be looking at your screen. Obviously, you can't put your computer or phone or tablet away, but you don't need to look at me um, while you're doing this. And in fact, I really encourage you to bring your attention inward. And so for that, I would recommend perhaps closing your eyes. Now, if it doesn't feel safe or comfortable closing your eyes, you might just look down towards the floor or your lap. So either closing eyes to really pull attention inward or looking down so that your, your gaze isn't all over the place and that you might get a little distracted. So finding however you want to be for about five minutes. Soften your shoulders. Unclench your jaw. This is a five minute breathing practice to regain calm and clarity and to begin simply become physically still, relatively still. Choosing a posture where you'll be as comfortable as possible. And bring your awareness to whatever is going on for you right now internally. Give the weight of your body up to gravity. Allow your weight to sink into the points of contact between your body and the floor or the chair. What sensations do you feel right now? Notice if you feel any tension or resistance. Notice if you feel tension or resistance towards painful or unpleasant sensations and if so gently towards them gently turn towards them accept them as best you can allow your breath to deepen so pulling in a little more air on your inhale 
and letting your exhale be a little slower and deeper. And slowly, as you breathe, allow your out breath, your exhale, to be a little longer each time you breathe out. As you breathe out, sense the feeling of softening and relaxing. You might notice as your body naturally does that, your body softens as you breathe out. As you breathe, Notice any thoughts as they arise and pass through the mind. See if you can allow them to come and go without attaching yourself to them. Observing the thoughts as if they were clouds in the sky. Notice any feelings and emotions as they arise. Can you let those two come and go? And now bring your awareness to the experience of your breath deep within your body. Drop your awareness into your breath and feel the different sensations in the front, back, and sides of your torso. Allowing your awareness to be within the flow and movement of your breath. Use the breath to anchor your awareness in the present moment. Breathing in the body. Noticing each inhale and each exhale again and again. And each time you notice your mind has wandered, gently guide the mind back to the breath, deep in the body. Gently expand your awareness to feeling breath around your torso to include your whole body. Feel the weight and the shape of your body. Cultivate the feeling of acceptance for all of your experience. And that might include any pain or discomfort. Or feeling a little flustered or unfocused. Befriend your experience as it is.
using your breath to anchor your awareness in the present moment. Breathing in the body, noticing each inhale and each exhale. Take three more breaths as you are. After those breaths, slowly open your eyes as you're ready, taking in the room around you, your surroundings, Take a few moments to just resettle into your space, welcoming yourself back. If you'd like, take a moment to write down what that experience was like for you, perhaps noting if anything in particular came up, thoughts or emotions. Did you notice something that you didn't realize was there, that you were feeling, or your mind was? Was the experience pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Take just a few more moments to reflect. If you want to share anything, you are most welcome to in the comments. So why did we just meditate? I said we were talking about habits, so why did we we meditate? Well, first, it is mindful living, and so there's always going to be that component of both practice and, and, and lecture learning discussion. When we meditate or when we practice yoga, it really allows us to get into situations where we can notice and observe how we show up in our life. And so today we're looking at habits, habitual patterns, And in meditation, we are really uh, forced to notice our ways of being, right? We notice our mind. Typically, especially if we don't meditate regularly, when we do sit and stop and be still, it feels like our mind is racing. It has a million thoughts. It's likely happening all the time, but you're moving and you're doing lots of things at once. And so you might not realize just how much you're thinking or feeling what even you're feeling or what you are thinking. So as you experience in seated meditation, you become increasingly aware of not only the physical sensations, right? What your body feels um, and other sensory stimuli like sound or smell, but you also notice your thoughts and your emotions. And this is among one of the most important reasons for practicing mindfulness. It allows you to learn about what's going on underneath the hood, (laughs) your hood, which means uh, the stories you tell yourself, the narratives that fuel and drive your behaviors. And this is especially beneficial when it allows you to observe your patterns of living that don't necessarily serve your health and well-being or the quality of your relationships. And that includes the relationship with yourself. So we, human beings, are often creatures of habit. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Habits help us get daily tasks done smoothly and efficiently without forethought and afterthought. Right? So like we can brush our teeth without having to really think about the fact that we need to do that or how we're doing it or what we need to do afterwards when we need to do it again, right? It's just something we do and we know to do it. But day-to-day repetition can also cause us to operate on autopilot, um, which can definitely be counterproductive, especially in terms of stress and anxiety. So when we're operating in autopilot, we're unlikely to see and much less to choose our reactions. And again, especially to stress and anxiety. So I'm gonna say that again. When we're on autopilot, 
we're unlikely to see and even less to choose our reactions, right? So then it's a reaction is how we act, reaction, how we act, how we be, how we do, <laughs> right? So as a result, we may impulsively react in a habitual way based on past conditioning, right? how we've lived our life. So when we're on autopilot, we may not even recognize there's a space between the stimulus, this thing that happened, and the response, which you can choose to do something. Let me explain again and in simpler terms. So when patterns become entrenched, they're like train tracks, and it's difficult to get off of that line, right? Because we've always been doing it this one way. Mindfulness offers a way out. It'll help you see more clearly what you're doing and more importantly, why. And so as you cultivate beginner's mind, the capacity to see things as if for the first time, you'll be aware of the possibilities that are open to you. All right, so here's an example. Here's an example of how easy it is to become trapped in habitual patterns of behavior. So after su suffering um, with arthritis and, and we're going to, I'm not sure, make up this, Joe. His name is Joe. So Joe's been suffering with arthritis and he's been suffering with arth arthritis, I can't speak, for many years. Um, he's limped as a result. Um, and he's a bit older, so he's going to get a, a knee replacement. He's decided he's going to get a knee replacement. And his recovery was slow and limping had actually become such a habit of his because of the arthritis that even through his recovery, he was walking with a limp. All right. Even once he was physically capable of walking without a limp, it was still, he was still walking with a limp because it's what he had been doing. So after many long months, physical therapist finally helped him get back to walking normally. And near the end of his physical therapy, on the day the appointment ended right before noon, a few minutes before the patient left, the, the physical therapist went out for lunch. And out on the street, she noticed the patient with another person, but once again, limping. <laughs> the physical therapist, dumbfounded, she approached the patient and asked him what was going on. And he said, I'm just walking with my cousin, like I always do. <laughs> Sadly, we often create our own limitations um, through incorrect assumptions and habitual behaviors. Right? It's just how we do things. Um, without mindfulness, we can be like cows in a corral with an electric fence, right? We're going to go one way. At first, the cows bump up against the fence. We get shocked, but we soon learn to avoid it. At that point, you can shut off the electricity and the cows still aren't going to approach the fence. Freedom is close at hand, but they can easily knock down that fence, but they're confined it by their own mind because they've been uh, shocked by that fence. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Do you see how... Maybe that shows up in your life. So such is the nature of habitual patterns. The fear of change as well. It's a fact that many dysfunctional relationships continue because of the fear of the unknown is greater than the difficulty or heartache of continuing with something familiar but problematic, right? We stay in situations even when they aren't necessarily helpful because, oh, that's just the way that they are. So this person is. Well, you know, you know them. That's how they are. Does that sound familiar? In many cases, we would rather suffer with what we know than face the unknown. And so our challenge here is to expand our perception and be curious about what sets off our reactions. You're going to do that now. So in just a moment, I'm going to share my screen. Pull out your notebook if you don't already have one. And if you don't have one, you just grab a scrap piece of paper. So starting here, 
we're going to spend a little time reflecting on any habitual patterns or behaviors that you may have. Um, okay, so it could literally be brushing your teeth. I already named that as one example, right? Something that you often do. So just taking some time to consider what are the things that you do habitually that you tend to do. Um, I can give a few more examples before we dive in, just in case you're struggling to like think. Um, some people always start their day with reading the news, whether it's now on a phone or a physical piece of paper, the newspaper. Um, some people, you might have the habit of always calling a family member on a specific day or time. You might always say good morning to someone, right? I'm not sure. These are just a few examples. I'm going to put one minute on the clock for you to reflect with. You'll hear the timer go off. Um, all right, so it's a minute on the clock. If you're still writing, keep it going. Just start to bring it to a close. I bring the second prompt onto the screen now. So first we're just looking at all habitual patterns, all habits. And now I encourage you to kind of zoom out and think of habitual behaviors, patterns, whatever, that might be adding to your stress, anxiety, or other difficulties in life. So you might pull from some that you just um, wrote. It might be some of those. It might be something that you haven't thought about yet. Um, I'm gonna give my example, what one of my habitual behaviors um, that adds stress or anxiety is um, I wake up and I often check my phone first thing. And sometimes I am really aware of it, and so I don't do it. And then other times I fall into that slippery slope and, and I do it. What tends to happen is then I just feel a little flustered and anxious first thing in the morning, I feel a little overwhelmed. And so that's a pattern that does not serve me, right? That's not helpful. Um, another one could be working through the day and not getting up to take a break which then obviously, probably, obviously, <laughs> um, leads to stress and anxiety. It also leads to just not feeling as good in my body. It can lead to pain, um, tightness in my legs and my back because I haven't gotten up and moved. I've been sitting for a while. So I'm going to put a minute on the clock again. Think about habitual behaviors um, that might be adding to stress and anxiety or other difficulties in your life. And it doesn't matter how, how you write these out, by the way, just you could write them as bullet points. You could kind of journal um, about them. It's whatever you want to do. All right, time is up. <laughs> Start to collect your thoughts, get them together. So we've got just one more, and it's not necessarily something that you're gonna write on, but 
rather more of like your, your practice now or your homework. So I encourage you to consider one habitual behavior that you would like to observe and potentially change or keep going. For the next week, really notice this pattern. Notice that habit. How it serves you or doesn't is a disservice to you, right? For me, like noticing how I feel when I check my phone first thing when I wake up. So that's all. Fairly simple. Just really continuing your mindfulness practice, right? So in meditation, we get really aware of our thoughts and our feelings, sensations in our body. You're going to be mindful about what you're doing in your life and if it's helpful or not. If you want to um, share any reflections, you're welcome to do that in this comment thread. If you have any questions from today's session, things like that, drop that in the comments. And then if you wouldn't mind, do me a favor, hit share on this class. If you found this class helpful, if you enjoyed it, share it to your Facebook page so that other people can um, take this class as well. I'm Casey Jean. And this mindful living class is bi-weekly. So it's the first and third Monday of every week. I mean, excuse me, <laughs> of every month. Mon weeks don't have more than one Monday. That's funny. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Such a pleasure to be able to be here virtually with you. Um, I hope that you, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you learned something um, about yourself. Please share one takeaway in the comment section below. What's your takeaway from this class? One takeaway. I look forward to reading them and I'll see you next time. Take care.